gases. So, gases, we kind of talked about this yesterday, but here we go again. Right, we are covered in this, this ocean of gases, right? We got tons of gases. So dramatic. All, all around. All over the place. Um, and they push down on us and in on us and all over on us. But our bodies push back, so you can't really tell the difference. Um, but we call this push the atmospheric pressure. Uh, we can measure it in lots of ways. Uh, my personal favorite way to measure it is in, is in atmospheres. One atmosphere is atmospheric pressure, so it makes it kind of easy. It's relatable. Um, but 101,325 pascals or 760 millimeters of mercury is also um, atmospheric pressure. But I think if I tell you, oh, this is under a pressure of 1,000 millimeters of mercury, you can't really put that together. But if I tell you it's like one and a half atmospheres, that kind of makes a little more sense. So I like to go with atmospheres. Um, but you can't tell that. So um, I'm going to do a little demonstration here that will um, hopefully show you that there is pressure. So what I got going on right now, I had to he was talking to me, we didn't have a little conversation, is I put a little bit of water in this can. This is a little can pop. I got some water in it. Um, and... I'm heating it up. Hopefully soon, that water will start to boil. What does that mean? What's going to happen when the water's boiling? No, the top's open. It's going to turn into gas. It's going to turn into gas, steam. Steam is water gas, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to start getting this gas. It's going to push out all the air inside of it. And then we're going to get some interesting stuff. But let's, let's just wait for that. It's not just going to run away. So we talked about Boyle's Law. Um, and how this works <laughs> is because um, as pressure increases, volume decreases, right? As you push on something, it gets smaller. I'm talking about gases here. So what that means is what you can say is P times V equals a constant, and it can be K or C, it doesn't really matter. And so if one situation is equal to a constant, and a second situation is equal to a constant, you can just get rid of that and just make them equal to each other. So that's why P1V1 equals P2V2. And so... <laughs> How you're going to see that in the equation or in the problem, right? It goes like that. One liter in atmospheric pressure is compressed to 0.75 liters. What's the new pressure? P1, V1, you don't know P2, there's V2. You do your algebra and you solve. So, why don't you give this one a shot? Give this one a shot. <laughs> We're gonna take. We're gonna pause, and we're not gonna talk about Charles quite yet, because I want to show this to you. So we got this boiling, pushing out all that air. So all that's left in there is steam. So what happens is when I put it in the ice water. <laughs> when I put it in the ice water, um, it does do this. It obeys Charles Law a little bit, but generally what's happening there is you have gas water, and it cools off and condenses and turns back into liquid water, and that's going to create a partial vacuum. So there's, so there's no more air pushing back out. There's a vacuum in there, so the air that's pushing down crushes the can. Kind of cool. Okay, Charles Law. Charles basically said if you heat up a gas, it's going to expand. And if you cool down a gas, it's going to contract, which is obvious. 
um, if you know much about weather. All right, that's a big part of weather is the, the heating and expanding and the cooling and contracting of air rising and falling. Um, also, if you've ever been in a hot air balloon or seen a hot air balloon, um, it's not like a birthday balloon where they hook up a hose and pump this balloon up. Right? They have a big fire thingy, and they shoot a bunch of flames up into it, and the flames heat up the air, and they expand the air, and then it goes up. And then when they want to come back down, the air cools, and it shrinks, and they go down. So, there you go. Um, first things we need to we need to make sure you're aware of. You gotta use Kelvin. All this gas stuff forever. Um, you always gotta use Kelvin. You cannot use Celsius. Okay. Why? So Kelvin equals Celsius plus two seventy three. Two reasons. One, you'll see on your own. Secondly, because we're talking about internal energy here. And so when we're discussing energy, you got to be using Kelvin. Because Celsius doesn't isn't about energy, it's just about water freezing in water. Whereas Kelvin is actually about energy. So here's the equation T1 V2 equals T2 V1. And let me explain why. Pressure and volume were inversely related. Right? As one went up, the other went down. This is the opposite. So T divided by V is a constant. Because as temperature goes up, volume goes up. And as temperature goes down, volume goes down. So if any one, if, so the your temperature times your volume is uh, going to be constant given um, the same temp or given the same pressure and number of moles and everything. So if for one situation it's true, it's got to be true for a second situation. <laughs> and then you can just set those equal to each other. And you have T1 over V1 equals T2 over V2. Um, so the equation works both ways. One, you can do it this way or you can do it this way. That's Charles. Ah! Ah! Um, so again, you have a 20 liter pop bottle, 2 liter, I mean a big pop bottle, 2 liter pop bottle at 25 degrees Celsius heat at 55 degrees Celsius, what's the new volume? T1, V2, T2, V1, solve for, for your V2 there, and you get 2.2 liters. <laughs> All right, Avogadro's law. There's a man named Avogadro. What he said was, the more stuff you have, the more space it takes up. Yep. So he said, the more moles of a gas you have, the greater your volume. Wow, he was one smart guy. So, volume and number of moles, again, are proportional. So, V over N is going to be a constant, just like T and V. Um, so then you can also use this equation, just like last time. So the fun stuff is now we're talking about moles. So we can go and do some stoichiometry. So I can tell you 0.5 moles of oxygen gas with volume of 12.2 liters is converted to ozone. What will the new volume be? You know your moles of O2 go from moles of O2 to moles of O3. Then you can plug in your moles of O3 into your uh, V1, N2, V2, N1, and solve for V. Came together and created the ideal gas law. So they put Charles' law, Boyle's law, and Avogadro's law all together and created the bestestest gas law ever. It's called the ideal gas law. And it's pressure times volume equals number of moles times the ideal gas constant times temperature. Check this out. Dr. Swan. Yeah. 
I don't know. All right. So remember the can experiment I just did? It can happen on a much bigger level. So let's say you had a train car that transports oil around, and you clean that out with uh, shooting a bunch of steam in there. So you shoot a bunch of steam in there to kind of to clean it all out with the steam. Got to wash out all that oil, but then instead of letting it dry out inside when it's filled with nothing but steam, you seal it back off, close it up, airtight, go home for the night. At night it cools off, same thing happens there, that steam becomes water again, it creates a vacuum inside, and the atmosphere crushes the tank car. So here's an example, hydrogen gas with one of 8.56 liters of zero degrees Celsius and 1.5 atmospheres, calculate the number of moles, plug it in, PV equals NRT. Remember you gotta always convert that T to Kelvin. Plug it in, do the algebra, that's what you get. What's up? I'm teaching my whole class and I'm actually teaching right now. So, here is the question, give it a shot. 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide, 25 degrees Celsius, and 371 torque. Calculate the volumes. Yeah, just the define. <laughs> yeah, proper. All right. So, first things first, tor is no good. So, 371 tor times in a line, one atmosphere is 764. So, that's going to equal, what about 4.6? 4, 4.8. Four, eight. Eight. Okay. So now you can plug that into PV equals NRT. Um, so 0 0.48 atmospheres. You're solving for V. Number of moles 0 0.25. R is always R. And T is 298. If you do that math out and solve for V, you should get C. If you have multiple pressures in one, or multiple gases in one container, the pressure from gas one plus the pressure from gas two plus the pressure from gas three, blah, 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 equals the total pressure in the container. Wow. Just like Hess's law, where the sum of all the little parts equal the whole, same thing. Well, Dalton was smart, wasn't he? 12 liters of O2 and 46 liters of helium both are at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. We're pumped into a five liter tank. Okay, let's simmer down here. Let's think about this. You got 12 liters of oxygen and you got 46 liters of helium and they're both crammed into a five liter tank. So, oxygen. We're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all the examples for oxygen and then helium is exactly the same way. So I plug that into PV equals NRT, and I got my moles of oxygen. Did the exact same thing for helium, and got 1.9 moles of helium. Okay? So now, that was before I crammed them into one little tank. So now I got to run PV equals NRT again, except for after I crammed them into a tank. So you got to add this to the No. I'm going to do because we're doing partial pressure, so the pressure of each individual okay. one. We could do that. So then you just run PV equals NRT again, except now you're trying to solve for pressure in your new tank. Your new volume is 5. You solved for moles earlier. Your R and your T, 2.4 atmospheres of pressure from oxygen. Do the same thing for helium, 9.3 atmospheres of pressure for helium. So then you add them up, and the total pressure is 11.7 atmospheres. Wow. A bit much. All right, have fun with this one, guys.
So how I would do this is I would say, okay, there's my volume, there's my temperature, there's my total pressure, there's my number of moles of nitrogen. Okay. Oh, I see some N with the moles. So. But you don't have enough information. Oh, I see. So what you need to do is you need to find the pressure of nitrogen first. So you would need so the pressure of nitrogen P V is two liters. N 0.05 R and T I'm assuming is 298 so your partial pressure of your nitrogen is going to be equal to about 0 0.61 or 62 so now you know your total pressure and you know your partial pressure of nitrogen so if you subtract them so 0 0.91 minus 0 0.62 equals 0 0.29. So your pressure of oxygen. And then after you find your pressure of oxygen. So now you know your pressure of oxygen. Yeah. 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 So now you know your pressure of oxygen. You can go PV equals NRT. P of oxygen. V of oxygen. N is what you're trying to solve for. R is a constant. And T. Plug it in and you can solve for your partial or for your moles of oxygen. Well, you automatically know it's got to be either A or C. So solve for your number of moles and you'll get either A or C.